Hello, networkers, and welcome back to another episode of Ask a Network Engineer, where I will answer one of your questions. In this episode, I want to expand on a particular um, question that I answered during the Q&A number seven. This was a question that was posted by Michael Delgado, and he was asking about recommended network monitoring software tools. And I really, I, I gave my rant of why I do not like network monitoring tool, why they don't work, my experiences with those, the price points, things like that. So watch that particular Q&A for those details. But after I produced that video and I uploaded it, I took a step back and I said, well, what about other tools that are not related to network monitoring? I didn't really answer that because I do use some set of tools to do certain parts of my job. So I figured this is great. Let me do some cleanup here. And this will probably be many videos, but I want to kind of show you um, the main tools that I use to do my job as a network engineer. So first things first, before we change the video to my primary computer that I use to do my job, um, I probably mentioned this several times or probably made little hints at it in other videos and you probably see it right behind as well for one of my other systems. I'm a Mac user, okay? And I've been using Windows for a long time. I've been big, I was a big fan of Windows XP, Windows 7. They were very, very reliable. I love them. But when it got to Windows 8, things were different. Windows 8 really was, it was the operating system that didn't, that removed the start menu. And um, it was just very unreliable. And it got to a tipping point where, for me personally, enough is enough. So I basically made the switch. This is now, I think we're almost 10 years in now. I made the switch to a Mac. And uh, that has been a very, very good thing for me. I found it that was more reliable and, uh, but not just reliable for me as a network engineer, it was really about what are the main tools that are really, really important for us as network engineers to do our job. That's what this is really all about, right? Regardless whether I'm using a Windows computer, I'm using a Mac, I'm using some kind of a Linux distribution like Ubuntu, we need to make sure that those systems can support the main tools that we will use to do our jobs. So for me, some of the main kind of tools that are required at a high level is I want a particular um, tool that can provide terminal access, a terminal application where I can telnet or SSH to the network devices that I have access to, you know, not just for my network, but for my clients, things like that. That's of course really important. Um, applications regarding to an office suite, like um, writing up documents, presentations, spreadsheets. That's also very important because I do a lot of um, write-ups for proposals, for documentation. Uh, I do use spreadsheets for a lot of different things and calculations. I do presentations of certain designs for customers as well. So that's a requirement for me to have access to a office suite type of applications. Uh, another thing that's really important for me is for diagram creations. As network engineers, creating diagrams are really important. So I want to make sure I have access to an application where I can do um, creating diagrams and topologies and things like that. Um, another thing is tools related to um, managing my code and doing coding, programming, uh, specifically Python. How can I build my code, run it, and you know, and other kind of advanced tools to do my job better as a network developer, doing DevOps, right? We talked about that in, in another episode. Uh, looking for applications that, um, I have my list here actually though. Yeah, for creating virtual environments, that's really important. Creating virtual machines or virtual topologies for learning or for proof of concepts, that's really important. We do that a lot. Um, and applications related to, yeah, access to the web, accessing my emails and remote access, accessing other computers or servers um, remotely. And of course, I guess a VPN program. That's really important. So those are basically the main kind of tools that I look for to make sure that whatever system I'm using can support that. 
So for me, I'm using a Mac. And I'm going to basically show you from those main tools what I am using to do some of those things. So let's go ahead and change the video. And let's, let me show you some of the networking tools or general tools that I use to do my job. And now I've changed the video and you see the desktop of my primary system, which again is a Mac, a Mac OS 10, or specifically it is a Mac High Sierra. So it's um, updated to the current version at the time of this recording. So if you're watching this a year from now, it's going to be, of course, different. And of course, my Mac has about 32 gigs of memory. It has, uh, you see the processor details. This is basically the 5k system it's an iMac system that I currently have and you know has you know I have a couple of external drives connected into it and of course um, there's a flash drive or an SSD that is connected and SSD is definitely the way to go very very fast and of course my memory allocations that I have there so that's again this is my system that I have as a Mac so on my Mac in terms of the terminal application to Tana or SSH I either use basically a terminal window, so open up a terminal, and basically from there, I can basically do, I can do a telnet, or I can do an SSH, so I can do that directly from the command line here on this terminal window. Or I can use a program, which I've been using for several years, called Secure CRT, right there. And this is a, um, this is a paid application, so it is not free. But this is basically great because this allows me to group everything and tone it to the various devices for my clients to access any kind of network device that I manage. And it can support Telnet, SSH. So this is something that I simply love more because it's a great way to manage all my different connections uh, to connect to the different devices. So that's basically what I use for my terminal apps, either secure CRT or a terminal window. Uh, in terms of the document stuff that I talked about, like a Word application, a spreadsheet application, a presentation type application, I use the Microsoft product. So I basically use um, Microsoft Word, um, there is Excel, and there is PowerPoint. So these are the primary programs that I use for Office applications on my Mac. Now, of course, there are other alternatives that are basically free because you must have you need to purchase um, basically Office 365 to access these applications now. Um, otherwise, you can use Google Docs. Google Docs has also a, a Word, basically a document, a spreadsheet, and a presentation um, options that you can basically do the same thing, right? My biggest thing is, is that I do a lot of publications. The network design cookbook that I use or that I actually wrote up, I wrote all of it in Microsoft um, Word. There's a lot more advanced tools that are not available in Pages and that is not available in Google Docs. So that's why I basically use Word. In terms of diagram creation, well, there really isn't anything native that is great on a Mac. There is something called Omni Graffiti, but I really don't like those, those particular options. Visio is really the best network diagramming application out there for any system. And again, Visio is not native on a Mac, which means that I have a virtualized server running on my Mac or a virtualized computer. And basically I'm using VMware Fusion. And let me go ahead and access that library. So I have a lot of different virtual machines. And then we open up my Windows computer. Okay, this is a Windows 10 here, but basically this is how I am able to go ahead and do all my network diagrams that I create for my customers and for the training series that we um, currently have. And this, of course, leads me to the next topic, which is creating virtual environments. And basically, I use VMware Fusion to run basically everything that I have. So whether it's for hybrid converged infrastructure, there's some Cisco stuff that I have in there. I have a Ubuntu, a FortiGate. VM instance that runs a mini net. So I have different virtual machines that I run and operate when I need to do other kind of testing and um, kind of evaluations of certain products. Whether it's for our training series um, or basically testing product, products before we roll them out to our customers or present them to our customers because that's what's really important. Um, there's also GNS3. So GNS3 is another 
basically a virtual environment that we can definitely um, that I can run on my particular Mac. Minimize all of this here. It's actually starting to open up here. Um, but basically, this is where I can go ahead and again just build virtual labs and kind of test things out. No, nope, we do not need to download that. And basically, my DNS3 is running as a virtual machine. So this particular program is connecting to that. So I can do more advanced topologies with the Nexus hardware. And basically, I can put layer two switches or layer three switches in here and do a lot of cool stuff in there. So again, this is basically what I'm using to build any kind of a virtual environment on my particular Mac. In terms of programming and doing all my coding, because we talk about network programmability, and that's really important for us as network engineers or network developers. And there are a couple of great tools that I love to use. And some of this I actually talked about in our Python training course, but one of them is called Sublime Text 2. And I simply love this because I can actually do my code. There's basically um, color codes here. So I can basically know what is a function, what is a variable, what is an integer um, variable, things like that. I can collapse particular sets of code, which is really, really great. I love that so, so much. And I can even run my code and see the results basically here in the actual um, display of this application. Now, Sublime Text 2 is not free. There is a free version. Um, but you'll get all these alerts that actually keeps popping up there. So you want to keep that in mind. Another program that I do like and you may prefer is called Atom. And I have that right here. And basically, Atom does more or less the same thing, right? I can actually do my coding. And this is basically this and Sublime Text here. This is all Python. And it knows it's a Python. You see here at the bottom that this is a Python code. So it knows it because of the file extension that it's using. I do a lot of Python coding that's extremely popular and what we can is very, very effective as well. Um, so that's why we teach that heavily within our training course. But anyway, though, this is basically what I use for doing all my coding and I can go ahead and run that code and see the results here in the application. So really good stuff. And Atom is free uh, compared to Sublime Text 2. So again, those are two particular options that you can use. In terms of web and mail and remote access type tools that I use for web, I mainly use um, Chrome or I use Firefox. So those are my primary browsers that I use to do my web surfing, my Google searches and things like that, or accessing web user interfaces like the FortiGate, for example, that is shown here in this um, page or this tab there. In terms of email, I basically use Outlook. That's the best one that I love in terms of the kind of folders that I manage. And I also have Office 365. So that's why I have access to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, but also with Outlook. So that's what I use for, uh, for web and for mail services. Now for remote access, I can use RDP, Remote Desktop. And basically there is a particular app for that on a Mac. So I can go ahead and do that. And RDP to any kind of server that I need to access, depending on what, what that environment has. Or I can do a VNC connection and just VNC into the computers as well, specifically like my Mac. So I can actually VNC to my Mac remotely if I want, since my Mac is running also as a VNC server. So that's what I use for remote access to the different systems. And last but not least, there are other built-in tools that I can utilize right from the terminal, for example. Let me open up the terminal window again, okay? So there's tools basically embedded for SSL or RSA tools. I can basically create SSL certificates directly from um, the Mac that's already pre-built, which is fantastic. Plus Python, Python by default is already pre-installed, specifically version 2.7 which means I can type in Python and it'll lead me right to the interpreter to do whatever I need. Now this is running version Python 3.6 because I manually installed that version to access some of the advanced features of other projects that I'm currently working on. But basically here in the interpreter, I can set up, let's say a simple variable called test and print out the contents in that variable, right? You get the idea, but I mostly use the Atom or the Sublime Text to 
basically build my code, run it, and there it is. Okay, but again, Python is already pre-built or pre-installed on a Mac, where for a Windows, you have to install it. So that's one of the, the benefits of that. Furthermore, um, on a Mac, on the back end, it is a Linux distribution, which means I can run Linux-based commands that you would normally do like on a Ubuntu system or other kind of Debian type systems that you may be using or have access to. And that's also a very good benefit as well, especially as network engineers. And that is it. So that is a overview of the applications that I use as a network engineer. And I do more videos of other programs or apps that I use that I did not cover in this particular video. And we are done with this episode. So if you have any questions about being a network engineer or anything in the networking field, post those questions below in the comments and your question will come up in the future episode on this channel. So please like, share, and subscribe and support us at routehub.net. And until next time, keep networking.